Hey friends, welcome back to another Mental Health Monday video. My name is Emma LaFave, and today we're gonna to be doing another kind of meditative exercise. Now I do have to be honest with you, today I'm having a day. I'm feeling really down and I am very unmotivated and I'm finding it such a struggle to get through today. And I had tried to shoot this video and I had this idea that I wanted to get different angles so you could really see the beauty of this little exercise. And I couldn't and it wasn't working and it was stressing me out. And I just took a second and I thought, okay, I'm struggling with something that is supposed to bring people peace and calmness and relaxation. And it's not just for other people, it's for myself too. So I've decided to scrap all those fancy angles, stop stressing myself out, and just explain the exercise so you guys can do it and watch the beauty for yourself. Part of my job is that I film all my own videos, I edit all my own videos, and I'm only one person. And I've never been trained in filming, so, you know, sometimes getting these beauty shots are not in my wheelhouse as much as I would like them to be and I find a lot of stress in that but today especially because of the nature of this video is not the day to stress I've decided to let it go I'm going to explain what we're doing today and I'm going to relax along with you and enjoy the process of this watercolor exercise because that is the point of these Mondays and I need to stop stressing myself out so before we begin, take a big deep breath, let go of the idea of perfection, and let's jump into it. Okay, so for today's video, I'm actually gonna be painting in my Canson XL watercolor sketchbook. I have my watercolors with me, and then I have my brushes. I have a size 12, I also have a size six with me, but I also have this water brush. So I wanted to show you guys what this is today. You don't need this today, but if you do have one of these laying around, um, they're actually pretty handy for today's exercise. What these are, are brushes that have this little um, water reservoir <laughs> where you can put water in it, you screw it on, and the water comes out the tip. So to activate your watercolors, all you have to do is squeeze it, water comes out, and you can start painting. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't typically tend to use this brush ever, um, but it's pretty good for on the go if you don't have a water jar because you can also, it's like self-cleaning. You just um, squeeze the water out and just run it against your paper towel till it's clean and then you have a clean tip. Um, so they're pretty handy for on the go. Uh, in today's exercise, but again, if you don't have one of these, you can definitely use just a regular brush. But today is all about the process. I don't want you to have to worry about the outcome of this exercise, so I actually recommend using cheaper paper, which is why I'm using my Canson XL sketchbook. Uh, this is pretty inexpensive, and I don't mind if I just play around on it. So use cheaper watercolor paper today because it's all about the process of getting there and just watching the beauty that is watercolor. We're gonna be using a lot of wet on wet technique because that is just the most therapeutic thing you can do. But I'm gonna show you some fun things that you can just experiment with watercolor um, and just have fun with it. Okay, so to start, what we're gonna be doing are water droplets. I don't know if you've seen these before and they're just extremely satisfying to lay down on your paper. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do it with just clean water droplets. So. If you guys can see with this brush, I'm just squeezing it. And water drops are coming out like this. Okay, if you don't have one of these brushes, you can take a bigger brush and just make sure it's really nice and wet. And then just drop, just kind of tap these water droplets on there. Works the same. And you can start with them clear if you like, because part of the fun is grabbing actual color, so I'm just gonna use my smaller brush just to pick up the color, is grabbing color and just tapping it in there. And if you look like way up close, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is why I wanted those special angles. You can like drop in the color and you can watch it move around. Let me use a darker color to show you. See how it moves around in there? You can just drop it and just have fun. And I just want you to spend some time, honestly, just 
filling up your page with dots. So you can do it like this where you create the dots with water first and then drop in color because that's super satisfying to do. I'm just going to grab maybe some blue. You, de you do need a pretty saturated brush of color to do that, to drop it in there. But if you get like right up close, like that looks so cool. I'm going to try and show you guys. It's like really cool. Um, it's extremely satisfying to do. So you can do it that way. Or the second way is to dip your really wet paintbrush right in the color and then just do drops like that. And you're just gonna, I just keep dipping my paintbrush in the water, like lots of water, and then just on my paper. Okay, that's how I'm kind of getting this. And you're just gonna fill up a whole sheet of dots. Just fill up a whole sheet of dots. I would recommend if you're doing it in a sketchbook to take it out because you're gonna to wanna to put it to the side because it doesn't dry very fast. And it's not about the drying process. It's not about seeing it at the end. It's honestly just super fun to lay down all these dots on your paper. So I'm gonna put on a little bit of music and this is the first thing we're gonna to do today. Okay, and then once you're done filling up your paper, honestly, you can just admire it. Like, it's so cool. I love taking pictures of it. I love looking at it from different angles. They look like these little candies. And then you have a choice. You can leave it. Or you can get a little bit of your frustration out or just experiment and just totally mess it up and see what happens. Look at how that moves. Now, all of these colors mixed together are going to make some sort of muddy brown. You can kind of see it starting to form as it moves around. So again, it's up to you if you want to just leave it and see how it dries. You can take your paper towel and you can just mop it up a little. You can try and make some cool patterns. Whatever you want to do with it is up to you. You can continue and just drop in color, kind of like how we did uh, the first video and just play around and experiment. 
That is it. It is not about the outcome, about what this looks like. It was about how you got there and how you felt when you got there. Feel free to drop in more colors and just kind of watch it do its thing again. Okay, so that was our first exercise. Now let's move on to a different one. Okay, so for our second exercise, this one is similar along the lines that we are playing with kind of like water droplets and just the way watercolor moves through water. Now for this one, what I want you to do is I want you to take your brush and you're gonna create a little maze or a pathway with just water. So you need your brush quite wet. So my water isn't even clean, but that's fine. And I'm just going to kind of create a pathway, actually having it not be completely clean. It's a little bit easier to see where your, your marks are. And you're just going to create these fun little paths. And you're just going to make sure that the whole path is wet. So it's not just like a swipe of a wet brush, but there's actually kind of like little puddles in this path. So I keep like dropping in some more water like so. You could write your name if you wanted to, you could create a flower, but you're just gonna create these lines with just your water to start. Okay, and I'm making sure that it's all nice and wet. So, and I can tell that it's wet because if I tilt it to the side, see that shine? That's what I want, I want it all to be nice and wet. Then once you have your shape that you want, don't think too much about it, honestly, just put those strokes on the paper. You're gonna grab the colors you want, you guys know I love my pink and you're just going to start dropping it into this path and you're going to watch that color move around. You can switch up your colors. And you just honestly, you just watch it go. Some parts will dry and that's okay. You'll notice where they dry because the watercolor will stop. It won't spread out as easy. Um, and if yours doesn't seem to be going through the pathway at all, it might have dried way too fast. So try and make a shorter pathway, maybe just a line or one squiggle and then drop it in. Um, I do have more different paints explode different ways. So that nice kind of explosion where it goes really far it depends on the paint. So if yours isn't doing that, I would test your colors out just for the future so you know which ones kind of move a lot more than others. Like some, if I dropped in a color, um, it won't explode the same way that some of these colors do. So don't get discouraged like you're doing something wrong. Some colors don't react the same. So I know that my pink and my purple and I know this turquoise really like to move in water. They have this like big explosion kind of feel to it. And then some other colors don't. Um, and like I said, it's going to dry in some areas and that's totally okay. And you can just keep on going. Again, like see here it's starting to dry. It's a little bit sharper. But then other areas it touches a wet part and it just keeps going. Let's see if I can find one that doesn't explode as well. I don't think my green does. Yeah, so see how it's like a little explosion with the green? It doesn't move the same way. That's okay, that's gonna happen. What you can also do is make sure it's really nice and wet. You can just re-wet the area and you can kind of tilt it through the pathway. Create more water in the path and have the watercolor run that way. So if it doesn't explode the way mine was, you can make it kind of go through it yourself just by tilting it. Okay, and you're just gonna create these lines and it's so much fun to do. And again, so therapeutic. You can keep it going, you don't have to stop there. Let's grab some yellow, why not? It's gonna mix with some of the purple and create a little bit of brown, that's okay. And you just keep going.
And there you go. There is your twisty path piece, which is so relaxing and therapeutic to do. And remember, if it's still wet, you can just tilt it and watch the watercolor run through your paths. And those are the exercises that we have today. You know, like I said, it doesn't matter necessarily about the outcome, but check out your outcome. Appreciate the beauty in the flaws. Maybe there were some kind of brownish muddy bits, but look at the way that the watercolor is separating some areas, creating hard edges and blooms and appreciate those imperfections. Because what you might find are imperfections or just kind of mud, someone else may find absolutely beautiful. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me back here next Monday for our third Mental Health Monday exercise. Have a great week, guys. Bye.